Security analyst is typically an entry-level role that might interest you as you prepare to enter the security field. The role generally focuses on monitoring networks for security breaches, developing strategies to help secure an organization, and even researching IT security trends. In previous courses, we discussed log monitoring and SIM tools. Having a solid foundational understanding of how to use those tools will certainly be useful in this role. Another role that might interest you is information security analyst. This role generally focuses on creating plans and implementing security measures to protect organizations, networks, and systems. We'll explore the Security Operations Center Analyst role. Security Operations Center Analyst, also known as a SOC Analyst, is another role you might find exciting. This role generally focuses on ensuring security incidents are handled rapidly and efficiently by following established policies and procedures. There are many more job roles that you may be interested in. A great way to find more of these roles is to create an account on various job sites and search for cybersecurity positions. A few well-known job sites in the United States and internationally are ZipRecruiter, Indeed, and Monster Jobs. Each of these sites have hundreds of open job listings with roles, responsibilities, and skill set requirements posted under the job title. How exciting is it that we're now discussing jobs and sites that you can use to apply for them? It's important that you do your research before applying to any position. Gather plenty of information about the company, the job role, as well as required and preferred skills. This will help prepare you for a potential interview by knowing exactly what the employer is looking for and how your skills align with the employer's expectations. This will also help you align your own values and passions with the organization's mission and vision. But before you can apply for a security job, it's important to create a resume that will catch an employer's attention. There are many different kinds of UX designers, interaction designers, visual designers, and motion designers. Let's start with interaction designers, who focus on designing the experience of a product and how it functions. They figure out how to connect the user's needs and the business's goals with what's actually feasible to build. As an interaction designer at Google, my team and I are responsible for defining the user experience for security and privacy-related tools. In my world, users always come first. There are also visual designers who focus on how a product or technology looks. They might be responsible for designing logos, illustration, or icons. They might also decide font color and size or work on product layouts. Motion designers are another common type of UX designer. They think about what it feels like for a user to move through a product and how to create smooth transitions between pages on an app or a website. Similar to UX designers, there are also graphic designers who create visuals that tell a story or message. Graphic designers usually work on the appearance of a physical product, like an invitation or a poster, while UX designers focus on how users interact with the product. Outside of design, there are many other roles in the field of UX. Collaboration is an important part of a UX designer's job. So let's talk about a few of the most common colleagues a designer might work with. UX researchers conduct the studies or interviews that help us learn how people use a product. Then, there are UX writers who think about how to make the language within a product clearer to make the user experience more intuitive. This could include writing labels for buttons or adjusting the tone to be formal or friendly. Next up, we have product designers who often act as a bridge between interaction designers and engineers. They make sure the first and final designs match in the finished product materials and that the assets are ready to be handed off to the engineering team. The assets are everything from text and images to the design specifications like font style, color, size, and spacing. Which brings us to the UX engineers, one of the groups that UX designers work with most frequently. UX engineers translate the design's intent 
into a functioning experience like a website or an app. And finally, UX program managers ensure clear and timely communication so that the process of building a useful product moves smoothly from start to finish. This might include setting up goals and writing project plans. Project managers are in high demand. In 2017, a study by the Project Management Institute found that by the year 2027, employers will need 87.7 million people filling project management aligned roles. According to that same study, the industries with the most growth are manufacturing and construction, information services and publishing, management and professional services, finance and insurance, utilities, and oil and gas. Project management plays a big part in helping all of these industries grow. In some industries, you'll find the term project manager grouped with a more industry-specific qualifying word. For example, construction project manager, or IT project manager, or engineering project manager. Don't worry, these are all still project manager roles. They're just specific to an industry. And it's important to keep in mind that the skills you learn in one industry can be applied to another industry. New projects are popping up every single day. Across all industries, we notice that new technology is introduced, which leads to processes changing and a need to manage those processes. So all kinds of companies need people like you who can tackle a variety of projects from start to finish to help them navigate these changes. By now, you might have noticed that you already have some of those skills, like organizing or planning an event, problem solving, or even managing a budget. And you use them effectively in your everyday life. Reflect on some of those skills. We mentioned earlier and ask yourself, what are some of the parts of project management that you're drawn to? While you may not have the answer just yet, thinking about these things can help you find suitable roles later. As you keep going in this program, try to keep track of the lessons and activities you prefer and the ones you didn't like as much. This will help you narrow your choices as you search through job boards later. The beauty of project management is that you don't need to be an expert on a focused technical topic. You just need to be able to manage projects. You could be a construction or technology project manager, or you could enter the healthcare industry and work in patient management. You could also enter the energy sector and act as an environmental project manager. The possibilities are almost endless. What's equally exciting is that you could even end up with a completely different title altogether. For instance, there are roles that entail a sequence of ongoing projects that are considered programs or operations in the industry. In this case, the role may not be described as a project manager, but instead something a little more evergreen, like operations manager or program manager. Other titles that might make sense for you could include operations assistant, project assistant, project coordinator, and program assistant. When it comes to job duties, your responsibilities might change depending on the type of company you choose. For example, the workload and specific tasks at a small agency will be different from those at Google. It's also important to keep in mind that as the world continues to change and evolve, so do industries and the job opportunities you'll find there. So be sure to cast a wide net. You'll be able to find more and more jobs you're qualified for. In addition to being qualified for project management related jobs, there's plenty of other roles or paths that may interest you. Internships can sometimes be a good place to start. An internship is a short term way to get hands on experience in an industry. Plus, internships are a great way to help boost your resume and set yourself apart from other candidates. One of the key benefits of internships is that you get real work experience while simultaneously networking with people in that industry. It's a win-win. Now, some internships in your field might not technically be project manager roles, but a lot of roles are easily transferable. For example, something like an events manager intern role can become a full-time project manager position later on. Internships aren't great for everyone's lifestyle, but if you can make them work, they're a fantastic option. Another path you can take is contract work. Working for companies on a contract means you'll work with them on a project-by-project -project basis, but you won't be a full-time employee. 
This kind of work is a great way to get your foot in the door and build your portfolio. Plus, it gives you the flexibility to try your hand at a few different projects at once, depending on the commitment level required for that. Another benefit of contracting is that it lets you explore different kinds of companies and project types. Since it's a temporary position, you can explore what type of company is the best fit for you. Maybe you find you like working with a large or a small team, or you find you enjoy specific types of projects. And if you find a situation that suits you and the organization, your contract position might just lead to a full-time position. As you keep charging forward, try thinking about the type of job you might be interested in going after when we're done here. Every new topic you discover brings you one step closer to your first role in project management and one step closer to where you want to be.